Okay, so let me just give you a quick intro. Um, so the reason I'm, share, I'm doing these lives is to teach you the things that I've been doing and I've been doing with my patients recently regarding uh, weight loss mostly. I mean, of course, there's been many other benefits besides just weight loss. Um, but I wanted to share with people in general, not just people coming into my clinic, but people in the community and beyond, some of the things that I've been doing that have been working and things I'm using with my patients and strategies that I'm using with my patients. So it's, it's a little bit of a complex system that I'm, that I'm using, and I'm going to try to explain the ins and outs of it today with you. Uh, if it's a, it's a lot of material, so you know, you'll be able to watch this over again because it may not all sink in at once, but um, I wanted to share with you some of the strategies that I've been doing that have been successful. So I've been combining two totally different things, one called uh, the ketogenic diet and one called intermittent fasting. I'm going to go into what they both are, but I've been doing both of them combined over the last few months and it's been really great not just in how I feel I mean I was feeling okay already it's not like I was sick but the weight loss and the mental clarity that's come out of it has been really amazing so I want to just share this with my community so let's start with ketogenic diet one of the questions I got a few days ago from someone was what is the ketogenic diet well it's basically making your body burn fat instead of sugar so basically you're going to use fat as your fuel source instead of glucose, okay? So that's what the basis of the ketogenic diet is. And it's not something that happens immediately. You don't just start eating more fat and less carbs and start burning ketones, but it does happen over time. So it's basically a breakdown of a, in percentages, it's a higher fat diet, a moderate protein, and very low carb diet. That's what the ketogenic diet is. And in my opinion, it's not something that you have to do all the time, meaning you don't have to keep your ratios of carbs to protein to fat as that strict all the time. I'm gonna get into that. But when you first get started and you wanna start burning fat, it's something that your body has to get used to. So your body has to develop new enzymes and metabolic pathways, let's say, in order to use fat as a fuel source instead of glucose. So when you're first getting into it, it, you have to be somewhat strict so that your body can switch over to burning fat instead of sugar. Okay? So the concept, the scientific concept behind this is called nutritional ketosis. That's what you're doing when you're doing the ketogenic diet. This has nothing to do, by the way, with the term called ketoacidosis. You may have heard that term ketoacidosis. This has nothing to do with that. That's a medical condition that some diabetics can experience and it's, it's totally different from nutritional ketosis. I just want to put that out there first and foremost. Okay, so that's what the ketogenic diet is, okay? Now the other thing that I've been doing is called intermittent fasting. So fasting is kind of easy to understand what that means. It means you're going periods of time without eating. Intermittent fasting is more like the time restricted eating period. So you're you're eating during a certain period of time and then you're fasting during a certain period of time. And most of the time intermittent fasting looks like you're eating during an eight hour period of time and then you're fasting during a 16 hour period of time. So an example of that would be um, you stop eating at 6 p.m. at night and then you, you don't eat any more food until the following day at say noon. Okay, so that's uh, that's 18 hours. All right, 10. So I got that wrong. But anyway, you get the idea. You're, you're postponing when you're eating that next meal uh, a certain number of hours. And the hours can vary. Um, six, 16 to 8, the ra that ratio was a very common one. But some people do longer than that. Some people go 20 hours and then eat during a four-hour window. So there's multiple ways to do it. So a lot of people are doing either one or the other. So if you see on the internet, you'll hear keto, keto, keto. People are doing keto all the time and they're not necessarily doing any fasting at all. And then you have people who are doing fasting who aren't necessarily doing keto. But the good thing is when you combine the two, and that's what I've been doing, it's just amazing because for the fasting part, it allows you 
to go longer periods of time without eating because you're using fat as your fuel source. And when your body's able to use fat as its fuel source and not glucose, your hunger almost goes away. I mean, it's still there, but it's very, very minimal. And you're able to go longer periods of time without worrying about food, which is a great thing in and of itself. Uh, and then there's another concept of prolonged fasting, meaning that you're doing fasts for longer periods of time. And we're not really gonna get into that too much today, but I do have uh, other videos coming specifically on that topic because there are a lot of benefits of fasting overall. Even with the intermittent fasting, there's benefits, but when you do more prolonged fasting, believe it or not, your body gets into this mode called autophagy. It starts burning its own, it starts repairing, I should say, and recycling its own cells. So it's a very therapeutic way to do some healing, but that's, that doesn't really happen unless you're doing longer periods of fasting. So we're not really gonna get into that today, um, but I just wanted to explain to you the different types of fasts and uh, the benefits. So the benefits of whether you're doing keto or intermittent fasting, there are many. Obviously weight loss is one of them. And when you combine the two, the weight loss is even better. So for the keto, when you become a fat burner instead of a sugar burner, not only can you go longer periods of time without food, but your brain and your mind becomes a lot more clear and you don't have like that brain fog. You know, like when you're eating carbs all the time, you know, you get kind of like dizzy and lightheaded when you miss a meal, you skip a meal, and you're not feeling great. That doesn't happen when you're doing keto because your brain is now running on ketones instead of glucose and you have more mental clarity, more sharpness, more focus. So there's a lot of benefits on how you feel, your energy, not in initially, but once your body adapts to burning ketones, a lot of things change. So that's a, a, a big benefit in and of itself. And the same thing kind of happens with fasting, believe it or not. Um, you just start to feel better, you go longer periods of time, you lose weight. It's just, it's just a, a really great way to like improve your health overall. Um, and also the fasting combined with the keto gives you something called metabolic flexibility. So when you are eating things besides, uh, I should say, if your body's burning ketones or glucose, your body's able to sort of switch back and forth easier when you become metabolically flexible. And this happens over time. It doesn't happen instantly. But it's good because then your body can just sort of meet the demands of whatever it is that you're giving to it, whether you're you know, doing more ketosis or you're not doing ketosis as much. Your body just is able to balance its metabolism a lot better. So we're gonna talk more about metabolic flexibility uh, at another time. So these are not new concepts. Obviously fasting is a really ancient practice and you know lots of cultures do fast on a regular basis, spiritual fasts. But just fasting as a therapeutic method has been around for a really long time. And um, there's lots of different kinds. Some people fast with water, some people fast with juice. There's different ways to do it. The fasting that we're talking about here is, is water fasting. Um, and then ketosis, the ketogenic diet has also been around for quite a, a long time. Um, the original research on it was showing a lot of benefits to the brain and it was used with epileptic people. Um, so, you know, it, it has a lot of therap therapeutic history. So these are not new concepts. They're not fads. It's, uh, they're both been around for a really long time, but in the nutrition world, these are sort of the things that are like taking over lately, which is really great. So you can do either one or the other, or you can do both. You don't necessarily have to do both. I personally do both, but if you want to just say do more ketogenic or you want to just do more fasting, uh, you can, but like I said, it works better all around when you combine the two concepts. Okay. So let's, Let's break down, actually before I do that, I wanna just do a quick explanation of the difference between protein, carbs, and fats because I'm gonna be talking a lot about what that looks like, protein, carbs, and fats regarding these two diets or these two concepts. So I just wanna make sure everybody knows what that means. So protein are foods, the mostly animal foods that, are, that consist of amino acids that build your body tissue, your muscle, and, and lots of other things. So protein is necessary, everybody needs to eat protein. And when you're doing keto, 
you're doing a moderate amount of protein. You're not doing high protein, you're not doing low protein, you're doing a moderate amount. That's gonna be different for everybody, so I'm not gonna give you a number of grams. Um, now, the important concept here is you're doing low carbs, so carbohydrates. Carbohydrates are sugars, starches, fruits, vegetables, beans. These are foods that mostly consist of, of carbohydrates that break down into glucose. I mean, some things break into fructose as well, but basically it's sh the things that turn into sugar in your body are carbohydrates. So when you're trying to get into ketosis, you have to keep your intake of carbohydrates really low for a while to get your body used to burning fat instead of the glucose. So generally you have to keep your net carbs under 30 grams, which is it's pretty low, but vegetables don't really count, like green vegetables. You don't really have to worry about that too much. And it's also very important that you eat green vegetables when you're doing this. You're, it's not a diet where you're just eating like eggs and bacon, because a lot of people think keto is just bacon and eggs. It's, it's way beyond that. And vegetables are really important because you need to keep your nutrient density high. So, you, you know, vegetables are a good way to do that, okay? Um, okay, and then fats are obviously the last macronutrient that we're talking about. And they, are, they form a lot of structural parts of our body as well, especially cell membranes. So fats are like critical. And for the longest time, fats were really shunned by the community and the nutrition community. Everybody was on a low fat this, low fat that. And then what happened was the carbs got really high and that's how the obesity epidemic pretty much took over. So fats in and of themselves don't make you fat. Um, it's the extra carbs that do. However, you know, combining fats with carbs all the time isn't great either. But you know, on a, ke in a ketogenic diet, you're having a highest ratio of fats and then the moderate ratio of protein and the low ratio of carbs. That's keto. Now with intermittent fasting, whether you're doing keto or you're doing high carb, you're doing vegan, whatever it is that you're doing, your diet part can go hand in hand with the fasting because the fasting is just a restricted period of time that you're eating. So, you know, there's flexibility there. I, I do know of people that do intermittent fasting every day or some type of fasting, but they kind of just eat. They're not looking at their macronutrients, basically. They're just eating kind of what they want because they're, the fasting in and of itself gives them enough benefits that they don't have to be that strict about it. But I think overall, if your goal is to be healthier, to lose weight and feel really good, you do want to pay attention to what you're eating when you're fasting. So it's, you know, it's not permission to just go gung ho and eat whatever you want. Okay. So that's the basics, you know, ketogenic diet and then intermittent fasting and then combine the two. Now, if you're just getting started and you've never done anything like this before, you should choose one or the other to start with. To start with both is a little challenging. Uh, generally, if you're eating, I would say if you're eating all the time, if you're eating like three meals a day plus snacks, I'd say the first thing you want to do is try to get rid of the snacks and focus on three meals a day. Eat enough at each meal that you can make it to the next meal without being hungry. So that looks like increasing your fat intake, okay, and decreasing your carbs. Because the more carbs you eat, the hungrier you're going to be. The more fat you have and the more satiated you're going to be, it's going to be easier to get to the next meal. So that's the first thing you want to do if you're grazing all the time and eating all the time. Up your fats and lower your carbs and see if you can get to three meals a day. Okay? That in and of itself might be great for you and you might feel really good with that. Um, and then if you're the type of person that's already skipping meals, already doesn't really need breakfast or skips dinner or whatever then fasting is gonna work really great for you without really trying that hard. So, you know, you, you can start, you know, looking into what it is you're eating during that period of time. So if you are skipping breakfast and just doing lunch and dinner, then you're gonna to wanna to look at what are you eating during those periods of time. So then you're gonna to wanna, to, again, have a lower carb ratio and a higher fat ratio. If, if your goal is to lose weight and feel better, like I said, some people just do the intermittent fasting and they maintain their weight, they maintain their exercise routine. They're not necessarily looking to do it for weight loss, so there's other reasons to do it. Uh, so let's see. If you're already doing intermittent fasting and you're already doing two meals a day, but you're at a plateau and you're not really getting where you wanna get, you might consider doing a shorter window of time to eat. So you might wanna go down to either one meal a day 
or you might want to do a shorter window, like a two hour, four hour window of eating. That's another option. Um, so in any case, you're going to be in a calorie deficit by doing that. And so that's going to enhance the weight loss. Um, so that's yet another benefit. And in, in this case, even though you're having a calorie deficit, it doesn't mean that your body thinks it's starving or anything like that. As long as you have you know, the proper ratios of the nutrients, of the macros and stuff like that. Okay, let's see here. Um, so anyway, that's how to get started with keto and intermittent fasting. Next, I want to talk about carbs. Last time, I didn't really talk too much about carbs. It, it probably just came across where, all right, you're going to eat protein, you're going to eat fat, and you're never going to eat carbs again except vegetables. Well, guess what? That's not true. So some carbs are actually really good for us. Some carbohydrates are healthy foods in general. But you have to learn how, when, and why to use them. That's the key. So I, this concept, I like to call it carb cycling. So you are still eating carbs, but you're not necessarily eating them all the time. Now, when you're first getting started and trying to get into ketosis and trying to do the ketogenic diet, you do want to concentrate on keeping your carbs really low for a while, for at least a couple of weeks, okay? But once you get past that and you're starting to feel better and your energy starting to increase from becoming a fat burner, not a sugar burner, um, you might consider doing a little bit of carbs here and there. Now you don't have to, like some people do keto and they just do keto and they, they stay away from carbs completely and it works for them, especially guys. But for ladies, I can tell you that doesn't always work and people hit a wall sometimes, uh, women especially, if they're not getting any carbs. Um, I started doing more carb cycling the last month or two and it's, it's been work, worked out great for me because I was starting to hit plateaus in my weight loss and just adding in some carbs at the right time and the right types of carbs always kept me going further and broke past the next weight loss plateau. So that's a really great thing. So for women, let's talk to women for, I think there's mostly women on the call anyway. I don't think I see any guys on the call. Okay, great. So for you ladies out there that are still menstruating, the week before your period is a good time to have more carbs. Okay, because there's certain type of carbohydrates that are going to enhance our hormones and we need that help prior to going into our cycle. So that's a good time to do like a, a carb up as I, call, I can call it. Okay, uh, you don't have to do it all day every day, but maybe like a couple times that week prior to your period, you at dinner time, you would have healthy carbs like sweet potatoes, maybe some rice, um, some beans, starchier vegetables. Don't be going out and buying like you know, processed things, but do like more healthier carbs, healthier versions of, of carbs. That would be a good time to do it. And then also you want to avoid fasting a little bit as well. Like if you're already doing intermittent fasting, it's working for you and it's not interfering with your period, that's fine. But it's not the time to do longer fasts. Um, and if you're having a lot of period issues, you know, and the, the fasting made it worse, you might want to just not fast during that week before your cycle. Now, for you ladies that are no longer menstruating or in menopause or whatnot, you also can benefit from eating carbs here and there, okay? You don't have to worry about when it is during the month because you're not cycling anymore. But if you're hitting a plateau or you're just not feeling enough energy or just something doesn't feel right, even though you went keto, you can try doing like a carb meal once or twice a week at dinner time. Dinner time is always going to be the best time to get your carbs in because... If you eat them earlier in the day, they might make you a little sleepy and your energy won't be as good like it is when you're not eating them. So eating them at dinner is a better time to do it and also will help you sleep better. So believe it or not, sometimes eating carbs can just so totally reset our hormones, especially our thyroid hormone and our even our progesterone and estrogen. So like, like I said, if you if you time it around your period or you know, postmenopausal ladies just, you know, couple times per week, you might actually feel better or break a weight loss plateau. Um, okay, so I still have a lot more to go, but I wanna see if anybody has any questions so far because I've covered a ton of material and I don't know how much you guys already know. I don't know what you're already doing. So does anybody have any questions so far about keto, what it is, how it works, or intermittent fasting, or any questions? Everybody's good? Okay. Let's keep going. 
Okay, so let's talk about some pitfalls that you might experience when you're first doing this um, and your body has not adjusted yet to burning fat, you might run into some, some problems. One thing in particular is called like the keto flu. You start to feel like run down and kind of sick and you're just not feeling energetic. It's because your body is still struggling to burn fat instead of glucose, so you feel a little bit off. So one thing you can do is add more electrolytes, electrolytes like sea salt, uh, either to your food or to some water and drink that. That will help with the symptoms of that. So that's the, one of the main things that people, if they're always burning sugar and then using sugar constantly, and now they're trying to switch over to burning ketones, it can be very challenging for the body. And another thing that happens when you're not ingesting so many carbohydrates anymore, your body will start losing water weight. So when the water comes out, the electrolytes come out too. So that's another reason why you need to supplement with more electrolytes. So going keto means you know, you're losing more water and losing electrolytes, so it's a good time to supplement with that. And even with fasting, when you're going long periods of time without eating, you also want to possibly supplement with some electrolytes too. Okay, sea salt is your is the best bet for shorter fasts and for keto. If you're doing longer extended periods of fasting, then you're going to want to add in other electrolytes like potassium. But for the most part, you know, sea salt should be should be good enough. Now, I know there aren't any men on the call, um, but I also want to say that this this the keto and the, and the fasting for guys. It's pretty straightforward. They don't really have to worry it's too much about when they're eating carbs. Or it's easier for guys. Our our hormones are completely different. So this this way of living is amazing for guys. They're going to lose weight faster than us. I hate to say it, but they do. They they're going to lose weight faster. They don't really have to worry about being you know getting extra carbs in. Um, I and that's good. So yeah, it's a lot easier for guys. So, you know, it kind of makes us jealous, but it's it's a pretty pretty quick to, you know, for guys to get into this and not, not have any problems. It's a lot more flexible for them. Okay, so let's see here. So I had a question about, I'm gonna get into one question real quick about the holidays coming up. So I did shoot an entire video on how to do all this around the holidays. So look out for that. I'll have that up pretty soon in the in the group. Um, but the good part is like if you do if you're already doing this this type of lifestyle and you happen to go to a party and you overdo it with whatever it is you're eating you can always get back on track one thing you could do is you can fast let's say you have a horrible meal and you ate too much and you don't feel great the next day then the next day that's a good opportunity for you to go right into a fast and see if you can go as long as you can so maybe you don't just skip breakfast you skip lunch you could try to go to dinner and if you're still not feeling good, you can try to go even further than that. Because so fasting is a really good way to sort of get back on track when that happens. And um, also, if you know if you're if fasting isn't your thing, you don't want to do that. Let's say you ate a lot of sugar that day. The next day, you just go right back into keto and go right back into low carb and keep your fats higher. And that's it. So that's the good thing about this. It's it's very flexible. The way this way of living, there's it's not rigid and strict. And there's always a way to sort of fix things and get back on track. So that's why this has been so great for so many people because it's not a diet, it's more of a way of living. And when you understand how your body is using the different um, sources of fuel to your advantage, you can really sort of play around with this. There's no hard set rules. Even with counting your macros, um, you know, for some people, they can be in ketosis and have 100 grams of carbs a day and still be in ketosis. You know, other people, they, they need to keep it really, really low until they get to that point. So it's different for everybody. So it's, it's pretty flexible and that's what's so great about it. My favorite part is the fasting part. That's just been magical for me. Okay, so I want to talk about a challenge that I want to do coming up next month. Well, I should say, and, and really it's in two weeks because the end of the year is coming soon. So. This is totally up to you if you want to join in or not. Some people had asked us about setting up some kind of challenge. So I thought a fasting challenge would be the best thing to do because anybody could just eat more fat. That's easy. That's not really a challenge to do. To start doing keto. But fasting is a challenge for people who maybe have never done it before or they're already doing it and they haven't done it for a long period of time. So the first week of January, I was going to suggest that we as a group so we can have accountability, all 
say how long we want to do a fast for. So if you've never done it, you might say, okay, I want to try skipping breakfast. You know, that's my way of doing a challenge. Or if you already do two meals, you might say, okay, I want to try doing one meal a day and see how I do with that for the week. Or you might say, like in my case, I want to go like a 48 hour fast, maybe even a 72 to see how I, see how I do. Um, I've done extended fasts before with, with juice and other types of things, but I've never done one with water before, like a long period of time. So for me, I'm excited because I know about all the benefits that are going to come from it and how great I'm going to feel. Because once you get into that fast state, you just feel amazing and your brain lights up and your focus is like amazing. So that's the fast that I propose to the group. Wherever you are in your process, you decide what type of fast you want to do as the challenge and then write it into the group and say you know I'm gonna start with this and then we can just sort of be there for each other and and help each other out with that okay uh, so let's see so let's go to the questions and answers so I had a bunch of people ask me questions earlier this week that I'm gonna shoot videos on but I wanted to answer the questions now in the group the first one was about sugar cravings so yeah, when you're when you're first starting out on this, if you're if you're a sugar burner and you're you know basically surviving on sugar from meal to meal, it's going to be really hard to lower your carbs and and do ketosis. So, a couple of tips: what you could do first of all is just do cold turkey, meaning instead of just reducing your sweets and your sugar, try to just go off it completely, and at the same time, increase your fat. Okay, because that will make a big difference in keeping you full. Um, and then with the craving part, you could try doing something safe, sweet-wise, like something like stevia. If you're not using stevia already, try it. If you are using stevia, maybe just you know use use more of it during that time when you're adjusting to that. But cold turkey is the best way because then you get it out of your system a lot quicker. If you just try to gradually lower your sugar intake every day you're still eating it so you still want it so that makes it a lot harder so I would say just do a cold turkey your withdrawal would only be a couple days increase your fat during that time um, and just try to power through it that's the best way and don't worry you're gonna be able to eat carbs again it's not like you're never gonna eat carbs I mean sugar is not the best carb to eat but you know in the beginning that's the hardest one to to break okay uh, so someone had asked about stress eating that's all they said. So I, I'm not exactly sure what that meant for them, but my question was, how are they dealing with their stress? You know, what was the reason why they're stress eating? So if you're not handling your stress, if you're not doing anything about it, then I guess a way for you to, to deal with it is eating. So then maybe you need to do some other things to handle your stress, whatever that is for you. Maybe working out, exercise is good for that. Meditation, um, maybe sleeping more getting some exercise, oh, I said exercise, um, getting a massage, getting some acupuncture, acupuncture is always great, and supplements, like are you taking supplements, if you're having adrenal issues and you're having stress on a regular basis, you probably need to be supported with supplements, and that's what we do at our clinic, we help people figure out what those supplements should be, so figure out like how you're dealing with your stress so that food is not a way to cope with the stress, you're going to have to manage the stress somehow, so anyway, I don't know exactly um, who I don't remember exactly who it was but anyway that's what I wanted to say about the stress eating okay next question was water intake when you're fasting how much well there's really not one simple answer to that that's gonna depend everybody's gonna need a different amount of water um, I would say you're gonna at least need a few liters per day and um, some of the water you're gonna want to put some electrolytes into but not all of the water because they were asking do you have to add salt water to all of it no you don't you just maybe make two separate liters with some electrolytes in it but other than that you can drink regular water if you want to it's not a problem so you have to sort of decide for yourself how much water you need is swerve good I'm looking at the questions now what is swerve is that a sweetener because I've never heard of it so let me know what swerve is and I'll answer that so back to the water question that's going to depend like everyone's going to need a different amount of water and everyone's going to need a different amount of electrolytes um, so some people you know need more than others I know with me um, I like the, the electrolytes in my water and it, you know and you know here's another thing 
what's your source of water? I keep forgetting to mention this. I, I have reverse osmosis, so like everything's taken out of my water, so it's, there's, there's no minerals left in it. So for me, it's really important to put more water, uh, more electrolytes in there. But if you're drinking mineral water already, you might be getting a decent amount of electrolytes, so you might not need to add as much. But for someone who's drinking water that has less minerals in it, you might need a little bit more. So that's, that was the case with me with the water that I drink. So then somebody also asked um, about go-to meals on the go and stuff like that. Um, I do want Donna to sort of chime in on this. Donna, if you're still on the call, you can maybe um, put in a little in, in, info in the, in the comments while I talk about this real quick. I like to keep it really simple. I'm not about making gourmet, keto this, low carb that. It's just like follow the concepts of what that looks like. It basically looks like some kind of protein source like fish, chicken, meat, whatever it is that you're going to use and vegetables. I mean, that's the bulk of pretty much any meal that I'm going to have. So I'm not eating bread, pasta, cereals and, and things like that anymore. So the, the basis of my meals is, is just protein and some vegetables and the vegetables I vary. I mean, I eat salads all the time. I eat cruciferous vegetables all the time, broccoli, Brussels sprouts, cauliflower. I buy frozen and I buy fresh and I mix it up, but I keep it simple. Like I don't, when I get home late at night, like I don't have time to do these elaborate meals. Um, and since I'm fasting a lot, I don't need snacks to bring with me on the go. So this is about not eating as much. So you don't really need to snack. That's sort of the goal. Even if you're doing keto, you should just be doing three square meals a day. If you're not fasting, you're doing three meals, so you really shouldn't need snacks. Um, meals to go, I mean, whatever it is that you made at home, maybe you just take some with you for the next day, like leftovers and stuff like that. But if you're going out, you're just gonna order meat or fish or chicken or something in that department, eggs, vegetables and salad, maybe some soup, some clear broth soup, and you're good to go. Um, is it better to add ACV or lemon? Okay, yeah, so apple cider vinegar or lemon juice to water. Yes, apple cider vinegar is awesome overall for health benefits, for for lots of other things. Wait, what did, I, wait, what did that say? I add ACV to most of my water. Yes, yes, so apple cider vinegar is good overall. Now make sure you dilute it. Someone had asked about, oh, it's very strong to drink. Yeah, you're not gonna just wanna guzzle it down. Dilute it in some water. Um, I put it in my tea in the morning every day and I put some lemon, a little bit of stevia, some apple cider vinegar, and some cayenne pepper. Here's one downside to fasting, you get cold. So every morning now that it's winter, until I have my first meal, which is usually between one and two, I'm freezing. I have to admit, like my hands are cold. I am really, really cold because you get cold when you're fasting. That's just a natural by byproduct of fasting, so I'm always cold. So the cayenne pepper kind of helps a little bit. Um, but yeah, lemon juice is safe, um, apple cider vinegar is safe, stevia is safe, uh, black coffee, herbal teas, green tea are all okay. Um, you don't want to do anything with like a lot of calories in it. So bone broth is amazing, but you don't really want to do that uh, in, if you're doing intermittent fasting as one, as one of your drinks. Um, if you're doing just regular keto, you can, you know, so that's a little bit different, then you might want to add some you do like a bulletproof coffee or something like that if you're doing keto. But if you're doing intermittent fasting, the period where you're not eating, you're just drinking fluids that don't have calories in them. So Donna chimed in here about her go-to meals. Thank you. Yeah, so someone's already cold. Yeah, so it's that, that it makes it worse, but um, it might help in the long run, the, the fasting with the Renaud. So keep that in mind. The, the, the point of doing fasting is not just for weight loss. It, the longer fasts are really for autophagy and repairing the body. So that's a really great thing. And like I said, that's not the topic of today's talk because I don't really know where everybody is in their path here. Eventually we're going to talk, be talking a lot more about the longer fasts um, because they're so beneficial, not just for weight loss, but for how you feel and for healing, like healing your, believe it or not, fasting is good to heal your gut. It's good to heal autoimmune disease. It's good to heal chronic pain and inflammation. There's so many benefits. I can't even list them all right now. So it's something that for me is just, it's so exciting because it's free. Like there's nothing, to, you don't have to buy anything. There's nothing special you have to prepare. You're just letting your body tune into its own wisdom and help itself. So that's a really great thing. 
Okay, let's move on. There's a couple more questions here. So someone asked about cholesterol. Will keep doing keto raise my bad cholesterol? Okay, first of, first of all, I want to say, and I'm not going to get into this too much, uh, cholesterol in and of itself being high means nothing. It means nothing. It, there's no correlation to heart disease or anything. So that whole thing has sort of been debunked. So you need to go online and do some research on that. And if your doctor's still telling you to worry about your cholesterol, you need to maybe get another doctor because it's not a big deal. It really isn't. All right. And what raises cholesterol is sugar and starches, not fat. Keto, to, it might raise it temporarily, but it doesn't have anything to do with heart disease or anything bad like that. So don't worry about the, the cholesterol part. Uh, your labs might change. It doesn't matter. What matters is your triglycerides. So if you're looking at numbers on your labs, you look at your triglycerides. That's the number you want to keep low. So if your triglycerides are high, that's a bad thing. But you know what? When you cut out the carbs, cut out the sugar, and do keto, your triglycerides will go down. So that's the important stuff. So look out for that instead of the cholesterol. Don't worry about the cholesterol. Okay, so then we had somebody say, you know, I'm already eating low carb. I'm already working out. I've been doing this for a while. Uh, so I really don't have much more weight to go. I just have a little midsection that I want to tone up. Okay, yeah, that's kind of where I'm at too. Like, I, you know, I pretty much lost most of the weight I wanted to lose. Just have a few more to go. Um, now, yes. Okay, so if you've been doing low carb for a really long time, you might need to add some carbs in there. Like starchier carbs to talk about, not vegetables necessarily. So, like I talked about previously with the carb cycling, especially for ladies, you might want to just revamp your, your hormones by throwing in some carbs. Try doing like a carb meal once or twice a week at dinner. See if that helps you break through plateau. Now keep in mind, when you weigh yourself the next day after you eat it, it might go up a little bit, but then a couple days later it could go down. And that's happened to me so many times that I've just hit these plateaus and it might go up a little bit, but then a couple days later it just drops down a few pounds. I hit another, uh, I, I went through another plateau just today. Like I was steady, 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 this one weight for weeks. And then finally, from just throwing in some carbs this past week, it went down a couple pounds. I was like, hallelujah. I, I, you know, got beyond another plateau, which was great. And I was very happy about that. And here's another good reason that you want to eat carbs sometimes, okay? The microbiome. So the bacteria, the good bacteria in your gut, they feed on fiber, soluble fibers from certain carbs. So they need food too. So when you have a good, healthy gut, a healthy microbiome, you need to give them food. So if you're doing keto for a really long time and you're not eating a lot of vegetables or, or even the starchier types, you might be depriving your gut of good bacteria, or for, I should say food for your good bacteria. So that in and of itself is a huge concept. So that's another good reason you might wanna, might wanna throw in some carbs here and there to help feed your gut bacteria, okay? Um, so yes, yeah, so if you're not already doing fasting, you know, the lady that asked about the last few pounds, it's working out a lot. If you're doing like three meals a day, but they're low carb, you may want to consider doing intermittent fasting. If you haven't already tried that, I highly recommend that you shorten your period of, of eating uh, at the bare minimum, like 16, eight, like fasting 16 hours, eating eight, and maybe even shorter. See if that in and of itself helps. If it doesn't, you might want to consider every now and then doing a longer fast. Uh, or even dry fasting, which I'm not going to really talk about too much today. Um, but experiment with the carbs here and there, and then go back to low carb. You go in and out of that, and then experiment with the fasting and see if that helps with the last couple pounds. And also keep in mind, people in general that are trying to lose weight with this, you're not going to just lose weight overnight. It's not going to be like, oh, okay, now I'm keto and I'm fasting, so I should lose 10 pounds a week. No, it doesn't work that way because your body has to get used to the new weight. So when you lose some weight, it's an adjustment for your body. It has to do all these metabolic processes to get used to the new weight. So dropping it too fast isn't good anyway. You wanna do it slower so that it stays off. And your, your chances of gaining it back are, are much lower when you're using fat as your fuel instead of glucose. Of course, you can screw it all up and just go right back on eating sugar all the time. You, know, you go back to where you were. But a lot of times when you break through the um, you're on you're doing nutritional ketosis and your body's able to burn fat as its fuel you don't really go back now here's another question what do you think about cheat days everyone you're always talking about yes yeah so this is what I'm saying 
this this relates to the carb part once you get to a certain point and you, let's say you you've gotten lean you've lost the weight you're feeling great everything is great you have so much more flexibility in what you're eating you don't have to be so strict with your carbs and your tracking you don't have to be so strict anymore you can have little hits here and there and you fix it and if you're doing fasting as well it's like a million times better fasting gives you the ability to be so much more flexible with all this than just doing keto by itself so yeah it's you don't have to say goodbye to your favorite foods forever now of course you're not going to want to eat them all the time but your body will get to the point where you have this metabolic flexibility like i was saying before where your body can go back and forth between sugar and fat burning efficiently it prefers to burn fat over sugar it's not just going to stick with the sugars I mean, there's so many scientific concepts I could get into right here, but I'm trying to keep it at a very basic, understandable level. So just know that, yes, at some point you can get to the point where you can eat things that you normally won't eat now and then and be fine. Uh, decreasing inflammation is more important than lowering cholesterol, wouldn't you agree? Yes. So yeah, the, the cholesterol lowering thing, look, look, cholesterol is so important for every cell of your body it's not even funny it builds your hormones it builds your brain cells your body makes 3,000 milligrams every day whether you like it or not it's a necessary it's a necessary uh, part of our body it's it's our body needs it so there's no reason to try to lower it artificially I crave carbs certain times of the month yes so there's a reason why women crave carbs certain times of the month and it's usually around your period because your hormones and that's why I'm saying that Doing the carb cycling during that time is a good thing. It's a good thing to have carbs to help with your progesterone and your thyroid function prior to your period. So the cravings are there for a reason. Your body's trying to tell you something. So those are the times you want to pay attention. Look, don't be paranoid that, oh my God, I can't have, like don't get into this phobia where you're so strict with your eating that you think you can never touch a carb again. That's not the way to do it. You want to be, you want to get to the point where you're flexible and you, you do the right thing most of the time that you have the flexibility to add in things here and there and, and live a normal life. So yeah, when you have those cravings, it means something and eating healthier carbs during that time is going to be important to help with it, with that. I was recently told the fasting was bad for your thyroid. Okay. So no, it's not. Um, you have to do it right. You have to know sort of where you're at with everything. It can be temporarily slowing down of it, but then when you eat the right things at the right time, you sort of just jump start it again. So you're kind, kind of just going back and forth where you might slow it down a little bit, but then you're getting it to work better. In the long run, you're actually making it work better, um, especially when you're able to burn uh, ketones and instead of sugar burning all the time, that's good for, for everything not just for thyroid. And then, like I said, you throw in some carbs here and there to get the conversion from T4 to T3 working a little bit better at that time. So it's, it's just sort of, um, you have to find the right times to do all of this. So you're not doing the same thing all the time. You're not doing things day in and day out at the same rate at the same pace. So you don't have to worry about like your thyroid completely getting shot over this. You still take your supplements for your thyroid or your medicine your medication for your thyroid is not a problem but you have to sort of base it all around your particular condition and you're of course you're working with me so i'm going to help you with that but yeah it's it's fine it's it's yes and no with the thyroid you know you have to do certain things right but yeah uh let's see here so next month um next facebook live we're gonna have which will be sometime in January. This is going to be the last one for the year. I'm going to let you guys know about a special offer that, that we're going to have uh, for working with us in our clinic. All right, We work with people one-on-one -on -one doing nutrition and health coaching and supplements and testing and getting people on, um, back on track with everything. So we're going to let you know about a special offer next time. I know right now it's the holidays and everybody's busy shopping getting ready for the last minute holiday stuff, so I won't go into any of that now, but I just wanted to let you know next time we will talk about that. I'm going to fast the day before and the day after Christmas. Great, so people are already starting to talk about their their challenges that are coming up and what they're gonna do. Looks like we're losing people here, I guess, because the Eagles are on now, right? Let's see here. What time is it? Oh wow, time flies, my god. I thought I thought it was like 8.30, it's almost 9 o'clock already. <laughs> anyway, okay guys, 
The best program there is. Oh, thank you, Joy. You're the best. Um, anybody else have any questions? This was, I know I covered a ton of material. I hope you go back and watch the replay because it was a lot. I mean, I talked about keto. I talked about fasting. I talked about carbs. It's a lot. All right. So just, you know, I'm going to be making videos like individual videos on all of these specific topics so you can have them in bite-sized pieces and then starting in January we're going to do the Facebook lives once a week so you can come in and ask your questions or watch the replay you can post questions at any time into the group and then we want you and we encourage you to do that we encourage you to challenge yourself and try some of these things I mean if you don't really want to try any of this stuff you know, maybe this is not the right group for you but you know we know this is working for us for me, for Donna, for our patients, for you know the people that I follow, that I learn from, this is working for so many people. It's it's not even funny. So you just gotta learn the ins and outs of it. Um, and everybody's different. Like everybody responds differently. There's no one exact way to fast for everyone. There's no one way to do keto for everyone. You know your ratios are gonna vary. It, it's a you know it's very flexible, and you have to sort of figure out what works for you. It's not like a hard set. Like, this is how you do it. These are the numbers. Just stick to it. it. There's a lot of flexibility to it, which is great. Nobody has any questions? Come on. You guys know all this, like, perfectly, 100%. Tell me one thing you learned. All right. If you don't have any questions, I want to hear one thing that you learned, if anything, tonight. Come on. What did you guys learn? Nothing? Do I have a really smart group tonight? <laughs> Nobody learned anything? <laughs> Carbs are okay, yes. We don't want to put any foods into a category that they're horrible. Like, it all depends. It depends on the time. It depends on so many factors. You learned so much. Great. Thank you. I'm glad to hear that. Uh, oh, I realized I could just push these little thumbs up things, can I? Oh, that's so cute. Um, all right, good. So cholesterol info was great. Yep. Cholesterol is this way of eating helps with inflammation. Yes, it does. It does. Listen to Stephanie. <laughs> you're, you're funny. All right, guys, I'm glad that you learned something. Uh, sometimes during long fast, get hot, rosy cheeks, hot. Is that normal during how, when you say long fast, how long are we talking more than 24 hours? How are you preparing your veggies? I do a variety of things. In the winter, I like to roast vegetables. I just cut them up, put on some oil, throw them in the oven. That's my favorite way, especially Brussels sprouts and things like that. I do have frozen vegetables like cauliflower rice, broccoli, and stuff like that. I'll saute that in the pan, throw in some nutritional yeast, some broth. Simple. Salads, chop them up. I keep my vegetables so simple. I don't make it complicated. I've done 248 so far and was surprised I wasn't hungry. Yes. The more you fast, you build up that muscle, you're going to notice you're not hungry. That means you're burning fat, which is awesome. A day. Okay, so you're getting hot on a 24-hour fast, Jolene? Because normally we get cold. That's interesting. Yeah, I know you're, you have specific conditions you were telling me about that you're taking certain things. So there's probably more than meets the eye in your situation. Um, you might want to just message me and I can get into that a little bit more with you. Uh, I roast my veggies with ghee. Yes, nutritional yeast is my best friend. I love nutritional yeast. And Kelly, I didn't get hungry either, but I used to. Yeah, so when you're doing keto and you're burning fat, your hunger goes away. I, I have to force myself now to eat twice a day. I mostly do twice a day now, two meals a day. And I, sometimes after I eat one meal, I'm not even hungry for the next meal. Yeah, it's crazy. Like my appetite has decreased so much. And, and then when I do eat, it's like a pleasure. It's not like I'm not thinking about food all the time, but it, it almost seems really better when I eat now because it's like a, it feels like a special occasion. So it's been, it's been great. Like I, I'll never go, go back to like eating three meals a day. And oh, by the way, I I'm not, I'm not saying that applies to everyone. Okay. That's for me. Some people are going to do just fine eating three meals a day eating keto or, or not, okay, that's my personal preference. I don't want anybody to think that you have to do intermittent fasting, you have to, no, nobody has to do anything, okay, this is what's working for me, I'm still moving towards my goals, like I don't want, want to lose that much more, just a few more pounds, but it's still working, it's a lot slower than it was in the beginning, 
but it's still happening and I don't feel deprived at all. If anything, I feel amazing and that's why I'm doing all this because I wanted to share all this with everybody. You know, I'm, I'm doing all this for free basically because I love passing on this information and, and helping my patients and beyond. So, and I've just been so inspired by how I've been feeling that I just wanted to let everybody know. 24 hour just cheeks, okay, maybe blood pressure meds. Okay, yeah, let's talk more about that privately. Jolene, I'll see if I can help you troubleshoot that. Um, so I believe I got through all of this. It was a lot. I went through a lot. So thank you guys for hanging in there. And um, I'm not sure when the next uh, live will be, but it will be in the new year. And your food budget goes way. To yes, that's the, yeah. My fridge doesn't really have as much food in it as it did before, which is really cool. I found the hectic Christmas seasons forced me into one meal a day because of running errands. Yeah, great. I mean, one meal a day, not a problem. It's called OMAD. That's the big trend now, OMAD. Oh, by the way, exercise. Nobody really asked about exercise. I wanted to throw something in there about exercise. Um, if you're doing intermittent fasting and you're not eating breakfast, your best time to work out is in a fasted state. So in the morning, you're gonna, that's a great time to work out. You're going to burn a lot more fat that way. So not to say that's the only time you should work out, but you, you know, work it out in the morning, morning is going to be great. Um, and then also if you're at a plateau and you're feeling kind of tired because you're doing keto all the time, if you do that carb up like I talked about, that will help you intensify your workout. So let's say you have like a, a carb meal the night before a big workout, you're probably going to notice that you have more strength that next day because you're going to refuel your glycogen stores and you're going to feel the energy coming from those carbs. Okay. Doesn't mean you have to do it all the time, but you know, if you want to time that around big workouts, that can make a big difference. All right. Merry Christmas to you guys too. You're welcome. Ha ha me too. I'm pickier with what I eat. Yeah. Pickier with what, what we eat. So yeah, there's, there's so many benefits. There's more benefits than cons. Yeah, you might have a hard time switching over to fat burning. It's not so easy to do. You might get some, some withdrawal symptoms in the beginning, some detox problems. Oh, and if you're another plateau that you might hit, like if you're having a toxicity issue and you have heavy metals, you just have a lot of waste material in your body, your weight loss might plateau for those reasons. And if that's the reason that it's happening, then you, you need to work with someone, you know, to help you like, help you detox with whether it's with supplements or or sprays or whatever but sometimes toxins in and of themselves will keep you at a plateau for weight loss so it's not as complicated it's, it's a little more complicated than you think sometimes it's not just about cutting your calories and fasting so when I started doing all this you know I detox every single year without fail I eat organic all the time I take supplements like I do all these things so I had no issues but for the average person there might be a lot more going on than meets the eye so you might need to work with somebody you talked about switching things up day to day. I have a bad habit of eating the same things over and over again. Yeah. Yeah, well, it's, it's not necessarily that horrible to eat the same things. But, you know, with the vegetables and stuff, you do want to get a variety. Uh, would it be possible to post a few days ideas of what and when to eat? Yes, Donna, uh, if you can help out with that, I would appreciate it. I'm not really like a, a meal prep type of person. Like, I just try to keep it simple and talk about the science and the concepts. But that's what Donna loves to do. She's all into recipes and food and all that, so I'm gonna ask Donna to, to do that. Detox, foot, bath, or infrared. Yes, so ways to detox besides supplements are we have an ion, ion cleanse foot bath at the clinic, we have an infrared sauna. Uh, those are two great ways to do it. There's lots of other ways to detox. Um, we have this really great spray that detoxes metals and stuff from your body. You just spray it in your tongue, it tastes like water. It's the easiest thing ever, called zeolite. It's amazing. So we have that. Um, all right, guys. I guess you can go back to the Eagles game and Miss Universe and all that good stuff. So if there are no more questions, any more questions, I'll just ask one more time because it's, you're all good to go. Okay. Yeah, the spray. Yeah, we can hook you up with the spray, Joy. Not a problem. All right, guys. Well, listen, I thank you very much for being here. Um, Donna's recommending a book here, which is a great book. Really, really great book. There's lots of YouTube channels. Uh, speaking of YouTube, if you haven't already subscribed to my YouTube channel, I hope you have, everyone in this group. If you haven't, I beg you please to subscribe to it because if I don't start getting more subscribers, YouTube's never gonna show my videos to, it's not gonna recommend my videos to any strangers. 
and my channel's never gonna grow. So I, I keep telling people, subscribe, subscribe, and not many people are really doing it, I don't know why. You don't get any weird emails from it, you just subscribe. So if you haven't already, please go to YouTube, to my channel, and hit the subscribe button. I really appreciate it, and um, you guys have a happy holidays, Merry Christmas, Happy Kwanzaa, Happy Hanukkah, Happy New Year, <laughs> all that stuff, and we'll either see you at the clinic or we'll see you on the next live, okay? Bye.